Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ita Four. Happy birthday to you. Hi, I'm Bob Work with Sharewell. I'm an executive solutions uh, strategist for Sharewell, and what I do in that role is I bring thought leadership to the market to talk about uh, where the future is going, where enterprise service management is, how IT service management work together, where collaboration, things like that. So what we're going to talk about today is ITIL. ITIL's been around, uh, ITIL 4 has been around now for a year. And what we want to talk about is, has it really met the promises that, that, uh, that we originally were told that it was going to bring? So we're going to talk a little bit about where we're going, what it's, you know, why it's here. Uh, we're not really going to talk a lot about the differences between what ITIL 3 is and ITIL 4. Suffice it to say that all the things in ITIL 3 and the best practices that were there are all still there and in place. And ITIL 4 itself um, is really there from a, a perspective of making sure that the collaboration happens across the board. So let's talk about this a little bit. So uh, from a business model perspective, what we've seen here is a pretty big change in the last uh, few years towards less of a shareholder type mentality and more to a stakeholder type mentality when it comes to a business model. So the business models that we've been working on inside the inside the world that have been in place for over the last 100 years with Frederick Taylor uh, starting this the, the current model that's out there, which is the shareholder model that's there. There's been lots of iterations over the last century um, uh, that have really advanced the, the entirety of what business is. But these changes that we're seeing today are pretty substantial and that changes that we're seeing are really driving, um, they're really driving things uh, towards more customer centricity. And so before it was about smaller groups of people really benefiting from whatever was going on from the, the organizational uh, development, the changes, the pieces that were going on. This next stage what is, is towards more of everybody winning, right? And it's not to say that everybody wins at the same level, but everybody winning from a perspective of making sure that if you're taking care of your employees, that they're taking care of your customers and that everybody wins. So it's all about this co-created value. And this is, I think, where we come in and we talk about why ITIL 4 is important and where it's coming from, because that was what was driving this piece. So with ITIL 4, what we've seen is a lot of collaborative type pieces. So ITIL 4 is all about taking Agile and Lean and DevOps and organizational change and customer experience and business relationship management and then figuring out how they work together, not necessarily in a specific silo. And that's not to say, let's stop for a second and talk about silos. We're not saying to get rid of silos entirely. What we're saying is the collaboration between the silos is really the important piece, right? And how that functions. And so ITIL 4 really sets that framework up to do this. And all of these different uh, uh, frameworks that exist out there are extremely important, but which one's right? Is DevOps right? Is organizational change right? Is Agile correct? Is, is PMI? Is ISO? Which is the right one? How do we deal with this? Which one do we want to talk about? Which one do we want to uh, adopt and adapt? And the answer, in short, is all of them and none of them. And what I mean by this all or none is this. It's, there's not, you know, DevOps by itself is not the answer. Organizational change by itself is not the answer. Agile, not the answer. It's the collaboration between all of these that is the answer. And so this business change that we're seeing in the theory, changing towards a stakeholder from a shareholder piece, is really dovetails in with what ITIL has been saying that uh, it brought to the table and how we do this. So each of these in and of themselves are fantastic frameworks, but they're not enough by themselves. And so what we have to do is we have to step back and look at this and say, how do we collaborate between these? And that's where ITIL really shines. ITIL brings that collaborative effort between the, these and says this is how you work in a non-prescriptive way. Here's a set of best practices and a set of best frameworks and how they're gonna to function together. And so when we look back over this last year, what are some of those things that they've done? What are some of those things they've asked for? So a lot of people ask me, when it comes to these frameworks and it comes to the models and everything, they, they say, is first, is, is, is ITIL dead? And the answer is absolutely not. And then the second one is they ask is, you know, is ITSM dead? And the answer is still the same, absolutely not. The difference is ITIL and ITSM have become so mature in their environment that it becomes kind of a given that it exists, right? But it still takes work and it still takes framework and it still takes processes and it still takes uh, all of these things and these frameworks to get to the best practices. And you're going to see advances inside ITIL and inside of ITSM continue. That said, where the big advances are going to be are outside of that area. And that's where the enterprise service management piece comes. And if you think about enterprise service management, right? 
across the organization and what it does, the IT divisions, and therefore ITIL and ITSM kind of in play there, are the right place at the right time to help enterprise service management really take it to the next level very quick because there is nothing inside organizations that are as mature as ITSM efforts uh, going on. And the reason is because we've been doing this for the last 20 years. We've had iterations of all of these functionalities behind it. So it's not that they're dead. They're saturated in a lot of areas. But that saturation is fantastic because what it's done is take us to a maturity level that we're not seeing anywhere else. So when you get to ESM and you start talking about HR or finance or facilities and you start thinking about what you're gonna do there, all of those same core things that are happening over in the ITSM world and in the ITIL world, which drives that ITSM, are going to be happening over in these areas. They're gonna be specific to those modalities, but the reality is the core of that how you function a process, how you take intakes of calls, how you do tickets, how you do automations, how you do workflows, all of that stuff, how you set up service catalogs, right? All of that same stuff is kind of similar. So it's, it's very similar pieces. That said, I want to be clear about one thing. ITIL and ITSM is not ESM, right? And so when you start looking at these pieces in collaboration across the board, you've got to have things that function together in a way that can expand into those areas versus saying it's just an ITIL thing or it's just an ITSM thing. It's got to be something that can be cores that can function in those other areas. So did ITIL allow this to, you know, to, to go down that path and did they hit that promise? Absolutely they did. So from a perspective of uh, what's important here, right, to understand when it comes to this year-long review of what's going on, on in, in the ITIL4 world. Uh, I, I think when we look back at this, did they hit the mark? Absolutely. Do we have room to grow? You bet. So one of the things we've seen is uh, they have released uh, several certifications along their certification path. They changed their certification path and they've released those pieces. So there are thousands of people who've gone through the certifications in this year, from ITIL Foundations to the Managing Professional, and they've released a, a couple of their other modality uh, uh, certifications along the way. And they're going to release even more here in the first part of 2020. The books uh, for that are all released right now online. If you go to the Axwell's website, you can take a look in their bookstore on that or to the TCO, who's the the governing body making the books uh, behind uh, Axwell's. Uh, they're available for you out there and you can you can take a look at that and get in and read about those things and they'll talk to you about how to do this. And I highly recommend both the books and the training. And as a side note on that, I would say that um, in the past, one of the things that we did see is if you read the books, it was enough. Or if you did the class, it was enough. In ITIL 4, I think it's pretty critical to say they both really work together. Um, the good news is the books are not as hugely dry and thick like the old ones were. They're, they're very intuitive along these pieces and they give you really good ideas on how to do these integrations and collaborations. So from that perspective, I think they've done a fantastic job of driving this piece uh, uh, to the next stage. And I'm really, really excited about where it's going in the next year or you know five years uh, as, as we look at what's happening inside of the uh, enterprise service management world as well. And I can see that ITIL is gonna take that and kind of drive into that area as well. So. That's our year in review. Did ITIL do a good job? I think they did. Um, thumbs up to ITIL. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday for Axelos with this. And I think you guys have done a fantastic job. And uh, I would highly recommend taking a look at, the, at, the, at any of the trainings that's out there. ITIL, uh, or Axelos, by the way, has a fantastic community of online uh, white papers and people talking about this all the time, too. So I, I highly recommend you taking a look at their website. Go out and join those communities and, and, and uh, and further your next piece. And I look forward to hearing from any of you about any questions on this and uh, talking to me a little bit about what your journeys are in uh, both the ITSM world and the uh, enterprise service management world as you work through that journey. Thank you so much.